Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe tena mchana wa leo. Uh, ni siku nyingine jema ya alhamisi uh, ya kuweza kusikiliza vile ro, roho wa Mungu anatuambia kuweza, kuweza kusikiliza kusoma maandiko na kuweza kufata kanuni za Mungu haleluya uh, mchana wa leo msikilizaji nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ametupatia uhai ametulausha kutokea alhamisi iliyopita tulipokuwa pamoja na leo ni siku nyingine ambayo Mungu ameona inafaa tuweze kuja pamoja tena kwa sababu ya neno lake kwa sababu neno lake Mungu ni uhai ni chakula chetu cha kila siku sio mkate peke yake haleluya i so much appreciate you wewe ambaye uko tuned unaniangalia unanisikiliza i know that today god has prepared this day for us god has prepared his word for us and it is uh, very important if you can pay attention kama kuna kitu ambacho unakifanya kama una chakula jikoni Uh, naomba ukiweke chini kwa sababu neno la leo linakuelekea wewe. Neno la leo limekuja kwa sababu Mungu anataka kuzungumza nawe. Praise Jesus. Now we are going to start by praying so that we may welcome the spirit of God in this presence and in your presence wherever you are so that he may speak to us and he may make his word uh, well understandable unto us in Jesus name. Na tuombe. Baba katika jina la mwanao Yesu Kristo mchana wa leo tumejikabidhi mikononi mwako kwa sababu Mungu unastahili Mungu we mwenye hekima Mungu we mwenye busara ambaye umetuwezesha Bwana kuwa uhai siku ya leo ili tukaweze kula chakula cha neno lako ambalo Bwana litaweza kutukuza kiroho na kutuendeleza sisi na familia zetu ambalo ni neno ambalo litaweza kusimamisha kazi zetu familia zetu na watoto wetu Asante Mungu kwa sababu uwepo wako huko pamoja na sisi na unaenda kutawala na ni katika jina lako na la mwanao Yesu Kristo naomba na kuamini amina. Haleluya. Praise Jesus. Kwa majina naitwa Pastor Ruby Ruth. Nimeokoka Yesu Kristo ni Bwana ambaye aliona inafaa kunikubatia, kunikumbalia kwenye wema wake na uwepo wake. Kwa hivyo najisifia huyu Yesu nikisema kwamba isingalikuwa ni yeye sijui ningelikuwa wapi haleluya na yeye msikilizaji wangu mtazamaji wangu naye nitazama mchana wa leo naomba ufungue moyo wako ili ukaweza kulipata ili neno ambalo Mungu amekutayarishia kupitia mtumishi wake ili neno ambalo limebeba uhai ili neno ambalo litakuwezesha ku move kutoka step moja hadi step nyingine katika jina Yesu Kristo and today i want us to first of uh, and foremost we think of where we come from tufikirie kwenye tumetoka una miaka mingapi miaka mitano kumi, ishirini, salasini, miaka mingi mia moja. Mungu amewezesha watu kama jana nilipokuwa natazama kwenye televisheni niliona mzee mmoja ambaye ana miaka tisini na tisa. na kwa kweli Mungu amempatia neema huyo mzee wa Kahengeri Mungu amweke siku nyingi zaidi kwa sababu nilisikia akiongea na kunena maneno ambayo ni ya busara sana kwa hivyo hapa sasa haijalishi miaka ambayo we umeishi iwapo roho mtakatifu yuko ndani yako atakuwezesha kuwa na busara na hekima nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu siku ya leo ni siku ya kukumbuka freedom ambayo tuliipata miaka sitini iliyopita and i'm wishing all of you a happy madaraka day tujivunie madaraka yetu tujijivunie freedom ambayo tulipata kama wa Kenya na Mungu ni mwema kwa sababu hata leo hii tunafaa tujivunie zaidi na sio tu kujivunia freedom ya inchi kupata uhuru lakini freedom ambayo Mungu mwenyewe ametuletea kupitia mwanae Yesu Kristo ya wokovu. Freedom ambayo itatutoa utumwani. Freedom ambayo Mungu mwenyewe alituletea ili tukaweza kuhesabika kuwa wana. Ni freedom ambayo siku ya leo tunaiangalia tunaona vile wana wa Israeli walipokuwa wanateseka katika inchi. Nitaita inchi ya utumwani. Wengi wanapenda sana kuita Egypt au Misri. Na tunapoangalia tunaona kwamba they pass through a lot but before then if we can go back a little bit to Genesis tunaweza tunaweza kuelewa how they came to that land and today my hand my heading being the Goshen experience nataka tuwe na experience ambayo hii uwe kwenye inchi yako uwe kwenye inchi ya jirani uwe we ni mtumwa uwe we ni nani Mungu hawezi kukuacha Tunapoangalia Israeli walipokuwa kwenye inchi ya utumwa. 
walipokuwa wanatumika kutengeneza bricks walipokuwa natumika kwa jia mbaya ambayo nitaita ya mateso lakini tunapoangalia tunaona kwamba God's plan for redemption ilikuwa bado na hao watu kila Mungu alichokuzudia kabla hata watu wengine kuzaliwa because when we go back we see they were almost 70 people when they entered Egypt but tukiangalia wakati wanatoka tunaona kwamba walikuwa wengi sana though they don't they were hesabu wanawake na watoto lakini kwa kikadiria wanasema ni kama watu milioni mbili kwa sababu wanaume peke yake walikuwa laki sita 600,000 people who came out of Egypt as men women and children not counted and today nataka ufikirie maisha yako ambapo imetoka tumetoka sehemu tofauti tofauti nazungumza hivi nikiwa Nairobi najua kuna mwingine ambaye ananitazama akiwa Kirinyaga as where I come from na nawasalimia watu wote wa Kirinyaga wanaonitazama thank you so much for those people who are sharing sharing this a uh, uh, channel ili watu wengi wakaweza kujua kwamba Mungu anafanya kazi because how you saw me back there in Kerenyaga village wakati tulikuwa tunaenda kule mtoni tunaogelea najua pia kuna watu wanaendeleza haya maisha huko lakini miaka mingi sana almost 17 i think 21 years in Nairobi na sehemu zingine lakini Mungu amezidi kunihifadhi siwezi kusema kwamba nimekuwa mkamilivu sana hapo ndipo nataka turudie kwa sababu maisha yangu yamekuwa na ups na down maisha yangu yamekuwa kama maisha ya mtu mwingine yote yule usije ukaniona hapa kwenye television ukasema ah rubi kafauru sana nimepitia sehemu nyingi sana ambazo nikikuelezea utalia ujipanguze machozi alafu tena uniambie tuendelee na story najua kila mtu ana historia yake kama vile historia ya nchi ya Kenya hata sisi tulikuwa utumwani nitasema na nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ina fasi Nimeipata leo siku ya madaraka watu wanapo celebrate as they celebrate this day ya uhuru. Ninaangalia naona hatukuwa mahali pazuri ndiposa uhuru ulikuja. Ndiposa madaraka yakawapo. Haleluya. Na sasa naomba kila mmoja kwa dakika kama moja au mbili ukumbuke maisha yako ambapo umetoka. Na kwa haraka sana nitakukumbusha kwa sababu tunajua mambo mengi na ninaposema mambo sio kwa sababu mtu alikuja akanielezea lakini unapata kuna watu ambao wametoka sehemu mbaya sana za kulala nje hana nyumba hana chochote alikuja Nairobi alienda mjini Dar es Salaam Kampala umetoka vijijini ambako chakula huku unanunua ambako ulikuwa unapata kila kitu maji ulikuwa haununui lakini unapoingia mjini kila kitu ni pesa hela hela kwa hiyo unapata maisha ni magumu sana na watu wengi wamepitia maisha And even when I'm speaking right now kuna watu ambao unajua wanapitia hao maisha. Wengine wanaona kana kwamba hawataweza kwenye maisha yao. Ni kama haifai. Wengine wanafikiri warudi nyumbani. Naomba nikwambie najua kwamba umerudi nyuma na umekuja sasa. Endelea kunitazama na kunisikiliza. Watu wengi wanapitia maisha ambayo sio maisha yao. Ila ninapoangalia kwenye kitabu cha Exodus naona kwamba kuna story hapa moja ambayo inafanana na maisha yetu pia. Story ambayo ilikuwa ya watu ambao walienda kutafuta maisha. Story ya watu ambao walikuwa na roho ya kuona kana kwamba tutafaulu kwa sababu tumechukua hatua kutoka hapa kwenda pale. Watu wengi wanafanyaga hivyo. Watu wengi wamechukua hatua wanasema ah Saudia nikienda Saudia wewe nikafanikiwa. Juzi nilikuwa naongea na mtu mmoja ananiambia mimi hata kama Saudia tu wanauawa. Ah mimi kujaribu bahati. Kwa hivyo Watu wengi wamekuwa wakikuja Nairobi wakienda mjini wapi kujaribu bahati. Lakini nataka nikwambie kwamba kila kitu ambacho unakifanya sio bahati. Kila kitu ambacho kinakutendekea sio bahati. Hivi vitu vyote ni vitu ambavyo vimepangwa na Mungu. Utakapojiweka katika laini ya Mungu ndipo utaweza kuelewa kwamba all oh, what is happening in your life it comes from God and God knows kwa sababu Biblia inasema he who knows the intention of the heart na yeye ambaye anajua mpaka unawaza nini hapa kwenye akili yako. Kwa hivyo Mungu anajua kila kitu ambacho unapitia utapitia kwa sababu yeye ni leo, ni jana leo na hata milele. And when we look at the book of Exodus, we are seeing a community of people who migrated for greener pastures ambao walijipata sehemu ambayo hawakutarajia watakuwa pale lakini kwa sababu ya shida zilizo wakuba walijipata pale. And this is a family ambayo ilipofika Egypt waliweza kuongea na farao farao sio jina farao ni kama cheo ni kama cheo kwenye Egypt i, th- I believe in today wako tu kwa hiyo ni kama kusema mtoto uh, ni kama kingship ni kama kingship kwenye nchi fulani 
Hata wale wao inajua kuna watu ambao kama Queen kama uh, England unaona wanaachia. Kuna mtu anajua kwamba huyu akiondoka ni mimi nitaachiwa. Kwa hivyo hata kwenye farao kulikuwa hivyo hivyo. Na kwa hivyo farao alikuwa akijua mimi ni kizaa mtoto wa mvurana wakati fulani ni nitaachia mamlaka. Na hao watu walipo present bele ya farao waliweza kuomba na kuwaambia tumekuja kuko hivi na hivi tunaomba makazi ya kukaa tunaomba hifadhi na kwa kweli wakasema tungeomba utupatie Goshen haleluya Goshen experience tupatie Goshen kwa sababu inaonekana ni sehemu nzuri sana ambayo ina rutuba ambayo ina maji ambayo kweli tukikaa pale tunaweza tukaendeleza maisha na kwa kweli naona Mungu akikubalia hayo yote yatendeke kwa sababu mwisho alipewa ile nafasi lakini wanapozidi kumot pray haleluya wanapozidi kuzaana wanakuwa a threat haleluya tunaona wanapofanyishwa kazi nyingi sana siju tutasoma wanafanywa kazi nyingi sana wanapigwa wanafanya mambo yote hayo Mungu alikuwa naona Mungu alikuwa natazama Mungu alikuwa naona wakati uh, wakati Kenya ilikuwa inapitia shida nyingi watu walikuwa na wawa watu walikuwa napitia mambo tofauti tofauti Mungu alikuwa naona Mungu alikuwa naona na Mungu alikuwa na mpango lakini hebu tuangalie Hivi Mungu atakuwa atakuwaje na mpango na maisha yako ili hali wewe hauna mpango na Mungu. Mungu atakuwaje na mpango na maisha yake ili hali wewe hauna time na Mungu. Yaani kwamba you don't care about God, you worship other idols, you go to witchcraft, you go to sorcerers, you go you do some funny thing, you have got your own gods. As we are, we are seeing the book of Exodus, tunaona Farao anaenda kuangalia miungu, anaita wachawi, anawaambia, "Eh, hey, huku kwa hivi na hivi, naomba mje muweze kunisaidia tutasoma naomba tusome ili tuweze kuendelea katika kitabu cha Exodus twende haraka haraka tuweze kuona what happened what happened na tutasoma Exodus ni ine tutaanza kiingereza then Moses answered but behold they will not believe me or listen to my voice for they will say the Lord did not appear to you The Lord said to him, "What is that in your heart?" He said, "A staff." And he said, "Throw it on the ground." So he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses ran from it. But the Lord said to Moses, "Put out your hand and catch it by the tail." So he put on his hand and caught it and it became a staff in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Again the Lord said to him, put your hand inside your cloak. And he put his hand inside his cloak. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. Then God said, put your hand back inside your cloak. So he put his hand back in his, inside his cloak. And when he took it out, behold, it was a stall like the rest of his flesh. If they will not believe you, God said, or listen to the first sign they may believe the latter sign if they will not believe even these two signs or listen to your voice you shall take some water from the nile and pour it on the ground, dry ground and become blood on the on the dry ground and then faster to twende uh, the same book of exodus 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 8 uh, 8 21 All else if you will not let my people go behold I will set swarms of flies on you and your servants and your god and your people and into your houses and the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with the swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand but on that day I will set apart the land of Goshen where my people dwell so that no swarms of flies shall be there that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. And very fast, 9, Exodus 9, uh, 3. Behold, the hand of the Lord will fall, fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the hands, and the flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt so that nothing of all that belong to the people of Israel shall die. And the Lord said time saying tomorrow, the Lord will do this thing in the land. And the next day the Lord did this thing, all the livestock of Egyptians died, but not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. 
as we can see from that passage tunaona Mungu ameona watu wake wamesafa ya kutosha na tunaona Mungu ameshamwita uh, Moses na amemwambia nataka kumtuma ni story mrefu watu wanafaa isome kabisa hicho kitabu kina mambo mengi sana ya kutufundisha na at that very moment Moses was was a bit of uh, fearing and he was like siwezi kuongea mimi ni mtu ambaye nina kigumizi and God told him I will be with you I will do everything that I want to do through you hallelujah kwa hivyo tunaangalia hapa kuna watu kule they are suffering wanapigwa wanauawa na tunaangalia tunaona hapa kuna mtu ambaye ametoroka Mungu amemwambia unarudi huko watu wanakufa ambaye anaitwa Moses na tunaona Mungu kweli amepanga hiki kitu sana na yuko determined kutoa watu kwenye utumwani. Haleluya. Na tunamwona wakati anamwambia Mose sasa, naona unaogopa lakini ili ujue mimi ni Mungu na ili ukirudi wajue mimi ni Mungu, naomba uniambie uko na nini. Akamwambia niko na fimbo. Na hiyo fimbo Mungu akamwambia hebu hebu uweke chini, iangushe chini. And all of a sudden fimbo ikawa nyoka. Na Mungu akamwambia hebu uchukue tena. Hata Mose mwenyewe aliogopa, anaitoroka. Ah, Mungu akamwambia hebu uchukue tena na ipo ichukua ikabadilika ikakuwa fumbo fimbo tena so we are seeing anamwambia buweka mkono ndani ya koti lako na anapoweka anakuwa na leprosy ukoma anapoweka tena kutoa ukoma unapotea what does that passage tell us inatuambia kwamba god is a planner god is everything that we need and when we have god in our lives Hakuna kitu kinaweza haribika. Ukiwa na Mungu, ukitembea na Mungu, hakuna kitu kinaweza haribika. Tunaangalia tunaona kwamba aliporudi kwa Farao, Farao anakuwa analeta shida, kukawa kuna plagues tofauti tofauti, mara mtu unatani kuwa blood the Nile, kila kitu kinaharibika, but still Farao anakataa. Anasema watu siwezi kuachilia. Tunaona Musa uh, Moses anazidi kufanya ile miujiza ambayo Mungu amemwambia ifanye, lakini still Moses anazidi kufanya moyo wake huwa mgumu. Tunaambiwa nina hii passage ya kwamba Mungu bado hata kama watu wanazidi kuteseka kule Mungu hapa ana plan ya kukomboa hawa watu. Mungu anazidi kuwa na plan yake ya kutayarisha mtu, mtumishi wake Musa, anamtayarisha kabisa hata kama makubwa yanakuta. Hata kuna wakati alipokuwa anarudi karibu wafe. Lakini Mungu anamwambia siwezi kukuachilia kwa sababu nikikuachilia wewe watu wangu wataeteseka. Kwa hivyo it is either you go, it is either you go and you do all those things that I've commanded you to do. And when Moses went tunaona ah uh, Farao kweli anakutana ana na yale, yale majanga Farao kweli anaona kweli mambo sio mazuri hata watumishi wake wengine wanamwambia ah kuna haja gani tuumie hivi lakini Mungu anazidi kuonyesha na ile miujiza kupitia mtumishi wake Musa ili aweze kukomboa watu wake ninapoangalia kwenye haya maisha watu wengi sana wamekuwa kwenye utumwa na wanapoendelea kuwa kwenye utumwa kwenye maisha yao ya kawaida Mungu huku anatayarisha mtumishi wake. Mungu huku anatayarisha mtumishi wake hata kama mtumishi anapitia shida gani. Lakini Mungu amempatia nguvu, fimbo, miujiza ya kuweza kuperform miujiza kwenye shida na matatizo ya watu wa Mungu. Lakini hapa kuna swali moja. Hivi wewe unayepitia matatizo, wewe unayepigwa kwenye nchi ya farao, hivi kweli Mungu is God your God? Is God your first solution? Is God in you? Kwa sababu Mungu hawezi kushughulikia mtu ambaye sio mtu wake. Tunaposoma tunaona Mungu anasema they are my people. The Israelites are my people. Wamekuwa identified miaka mingi sana nyuma kama watu wa Mungu. Wamekuwa identified kupitia baba yao Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Inaonekana hii ni safari ambayo ndipo niliwambia kila mtu angalia nyuma kwenye umetoka. Angalia familia kwenye umetoka. Angalia angalia safari kwenye umetoka umepitia. Angalia mashida ambayo umekubana nayo wenda kawa sometimes si unaona uh, wengi wanafikiria kwamba familia yetu pengine kuna mtu alikuwa mchawi pengine kuna mtu aliomba shetani pengine kuna mtu alifanya hili na lile but tunapoangalia inaweza kuwa sometimes ni ukweli lakini haimaanishi kwamba uendelee kukaa pale haimaanishi kwamba utakuwa utumwani wa hiyo dhambi utakuwa utumwani wa kurudia yale mambo ambayo yalifanywa na watu wenu ndio ni kweli kuna watu walitengenezea hao Israeli maisha kwa sababu walikaa na Mungu walitembea na Mungu walishikilia Mungu na mimi nataka nikwambie mchana wa leo wewe ulikotoka ni wazazi ni familia kwenu lakini hapa kuna maisha yako ambapo ulipo kuna maisha yako we msikilizaji mtamazamaji hayo maisha yako ndi unafaa ushikanishe na Mungu hayo maisha yako ndi unafaa uyatengeneze ili hata wewe vizazi vyako vitakapokuja vijipate kwenye utumwa vitakapokuja vijipate kwenye mateso Mungu atakumbuka na Mungu atatuma mtu wa kwenda kuwaokoa. Haleluya. Tunapoangalia kwenye kitabu hichi cha Exodus, tunaona kwamba Mungu anang'ang'ana sana. 
Yaani Mungu atafanya chochote kile hata awae awae watoto wote wa kwanza firstborn sons wa farao na watu wake. Kwa sababu kuna watu hapa ambao wameishi maisha ya Mungu. Kuna watu hapa ambao wa familia zao, watu wao, mama zao wamekuwa kililia Mungu. Kuna watu hapa ambao wanateseka na ni watu wa Mungu. They are God's people. Ni maana kama ini ukisoma utaona au tano Mungu anasema they are my people. And I'm getting kwanza Mungu anasema they are my first born sons, the Israelites. If you are you are a first a first born son of God. And being a first born of uh, of God is being faithful. Is following God's commandment. Is doing what is right. Because as we can see, why God is fighting so much for his people? It is because he wants them to go continue serving him. Because kwenye wako kwenye utumwa, hawana time ya kumserve Mungu vizuri. Hawana time kwa sababu wamewekewa matofali lazima watengeneze kiwango fulani kwa siku. Wamewekewa matofali lazima wafanye hivi. Kwa hivyo hawana uhuru wa kufanya chochote. Kwa hivyo inawabidi a uh, mambo ambayo wanafaa yafanye hawayafanyi kuhusiana na Mungu wao na kidogo kidogo ni kama hata wanataka wahusishwe waanze kuomba miungu ya falao tunapoangalia tunaona vile Mungu aliweza kumaliza miungu yote kwa sababu kwenye Egypt falao na watu wake waliamini kwamba mto Nile au miungu miungu zao zinakuwaka kwenye mto mto Nile na hata tunaona wakiwa na miungu ambayo ina vichwa kama vya chura Haleluya. Na inaonekana ni kama wanataka kusawishi hao Israeli waweze kujiunga na kuabudu ile miungu. Lakini kwa sababu ni watu wa Mungu, Mungu anazidi kuwa preserve. We are seeing a preservation of a nation. We are seeing a preservation of a clan, a generation. We are seeing a preservation of someone who trusts in God, of someone who is faithful, someone who knows that God is above all. Hivi kwenye maisha yako, Mungu ndiye kila kitu. Kwenye biashara yako, Mungu ndiye kitu kila kitu, ndiye wa kwanza. Mungu ndiye unategemea au unategemea wachawi. Tunapoangalia kwenye passage ya Exodus, tunaona wakati Mungu anaendelea kufanya miujiza ili Farao aweze kusikia na aweze kuachilia watu wake ambao ni watu wa Mungu. Farao anazidi kufanya mwe wake mgumu. Tunaona mpaka anaita sorcerers, wachawi. Ili wakuje wajaribu wajaribu kufanya miujiza pia. Na kwa kweli, mara ya kwanza uh, Musa alipoangusha fimbo, tunaona imekuwa nyoka anaita wachawi wake wanakuja wanaangusha fimbo zao zinakuwa nyoka wengine wadogo wengi but ile kitu tunaona hapa ni kwamba nyoka wa Musa ambaye ni fimbo imekuwa nyoka sababu ya miujiza ya Mungu anawameza wote wale nyoka wa wachawi inatuambia nini ya kwamba Mungu ana nguvu kuliko chochote Mungu ana nguvu kuliko kuliko uh, oppressors kuliko hao watu ambao wametukalia kuliko watu hao ambao wanaenda kuwaganga kuliko hao watu ambao wanatuwazia mabaya kuliko hao watu ambao wametufanya watumwa kwa mambo mengi kwa sababu unaweza ukafanya mtumwa na mambo mengi sana mtumwa kwa mambo mengi sana nimeona watu wengine wamefanya watumwa na simu simu ya kufanya mtumwa tu yani hakuna kitu kingine ni pale kwenye simu tu tiktok wewe ukiona kichochote kenye kinakuja tu wewe unaanguka unaanguka style mpya ya kudansi unakuja kudodosha pale eh unapata kwamba you are focusing so much so much on, on what is going on in the world but you're not focusing on what God is speaking what God is telling you what God is telling his people are you God's person are you God's people how are you identified with God my question to you my viewer how are you identified with God because ukiwa identified na Mungu lazima atakuchunga lazima atakuwazia mema lazima atahakikisha jia zako zote zimenyooka hata kama mambo uko katikati ya shetani hata kama umelaziwa umeyakiwa ume nini mati kwa shetani kwa nyumba yake Mungu atahakikisha kwamba anakuchunga kwa hiyo wale watu ambao wanapitia crisis tofauti tofauti kwenye maisha yao aswa this time ambapo uchumi sio mzuri sana watu wanapitia mambo mengi sana na mchana wa leo nataka nikwambie kwamba if you belong to God God is fighting your battles God is preparing for a rescue God is preparing someone to come and rescue and take you out of that oppression house Haleluya. Mungu anatayarishia hiyo biashara yako. Mtu wa kuinua. Lakini lazima ushikamane na Mungu na umfanye Mungu wako. Tukiangalia hii miujiza yote ambayo inafanyika. Hata watoto wa wana wa Farao na watoto pia mtoto pia Farao wanakufa. Mungu akitayarishia watu wake jia ya, ku, ya kuondoka utumwani. Mungu anatayarishia watu wake kwa kufanya chochote kile. Hivi Mungu anaweza kukutayarishia jia ya kukutoa utumwani wewe. Kwa sababu Mungu hawezi kudini na mtu ambaye hamtegemei. Ni either utegemee Mungu kama Israeli, uendelee kutegemea Mungu hata ukiwa kwenye hiyo 
kazi ambayo haikufurahishi. Ukiwa chini ya huyo boss ambao ambaye anakuumiza sana. Huyo boss wako ambaye anakupeleka vibaya. Lazima uzidi kumtumainia Mungu because God is preparing a rescuer. Mungu anatayarisha mtu wa kukomboa, wa kuja kukutoa. Na huyo mtu atakuja na miujiza na mchana wa leo. Huyo mtu ni neno la Mungu ambalo tumelisoma leo. Huyo mtu amesimama mbele yako leo kukwambia kwamba shida zako zote ambazo unapitia zinakuja kuondolewa mchana wa leo katika jina Yesu Kristo. Matatizo yote ambayo unakumbana nayo kwenye maisha yako, Mungu amekuja kuyaondoa mchana wa leo. And God is doing going to do something great. If at all you are going to connect yourself with God. If at all you are going to connect yourself well with heavens. And by doing so you have to be faithful. You have to be kind. You have to treat other people the way you would want to be treated. Hallelujah. To by doing so you have to stop going to the sorcerer witches and witch wizards. You have to stop going to look for other gods and deities. Lazima sasa uweke jikia zako sawa na Mungu. Ili na yeye akuwe makini anapotafuta mtu wa kukutoa, kukuinua, kukutoa utumwani. Kwa sababu Mungu anatuambia kwamba anawapigania wale ambao wanamtegemea. Hallelujah. Tunapoangalia kwa haraka haraka kitabu cha Revelation. Revelation itasoma kidogo. 28 Hallelujah Revelation and Asoma He who testifies to these things says Surely I am coming soon Amen Come Lord Jesus the grace of the Lord Jesus will be will be with all Amen That is the only thing So even if I'm talking or speaking to your business to your job, to your family, to everything. I want you to remember today that the one who is coming to rescue you is Jesus Christ, who is coming very soon. And the best thing to do ni kujishikamanisha na Yesu, kumkubali Yesu, awe mwokozi wa maisha yako. Haya mambo mengine yote atashughulikia. Hawa mengine yote atatuma mtu wa kuya rescue. Kwa hiyo, ningeomba ambaye ananitazama kama uko hapo, ungependa kuokoka. Naomba urudia maneno nyuma yangu. Bwana Yesu, katika jina Yesu Kristo Nimekuja mbele zako nikijua kwamba hakuna mwingine. Najua kwamba mimi nimenye dhambi na naomba kusamehe dhambi zangu. Na mchana wa leo nimekukumbali Yesu Kristo uingie kwenye maisha yangu na shetani wewe nimekukataa na nitafuata jia za Mungu kwa sababu nataka kuitwa mmoja wa wana wa Mungu. Na katika jina Yesu Kristo nimeokoka, nimeamini na nimeokoka in Jesus name. We ambaye umerudia after me umeokoka, Yesu Kristo ni mbona kwenye maisha yako tafuta kanisa ambayo iko karibu na wewe na uweze kuabudu na wengine ambao wamemkubalia Kristo na wamemkubalia Mungu kama mwokozi wao na mwokozi wa dunia yote. Hallelujah. Nitaripeat tena uh, kabla tujaomba uh, kwa majina ni Pastor Ruby Ruth na shiriki kwenye kanisa la Praise Cathedral iko Momba uh, Mulolongo actually iko three ya uh, 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 nyuma ya uh, 3D nyumba inaitwa Skyway Sky Gomol first floor Praise Cathedral na nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya hii nafasi ya kuhubiri kuwatangaza uh, uh, habari jema watu wa Mungu na kuambia kwamba Mungu anawapenda sana na Mungu ana mpango mwema na maisha yako wewe ambaye unatazama Mungu ana mpango mwema na biashara yako Mungu ana mpango mwema na familia yako Mungu ana mpango mwema na mawazo yako hayo iwapo utawaza mawazo ya Mungu iwapo utawaza mawazo ya kumtukuza Mungu iwapo utawaza mawazo ya kumuinua Mungu na kumfanya Mungu mkuu kwenye maisha yako Mungu mkuu kwenye familia yako Mungu mkuu kwenye mawazo yako yote na kama ungetaka kubariki huduma kuna namba hapo chini najua kuna namba hapo 0718 7848 unaweza ukanibariki ukabariki huduma yangu ukabariki kazi ya Mungu na Mungu atakubariki sana nashukuru sana kwa wale ambao wana share na nashukuru Mungu kwa wale ambao wananiandikia inbox kwa sababu mnataka kusikia hii habari over and over tutaona vile tutasfanya nitawatangazia hapo kwenye Facebook page yangu siku ni gani masaa ni gani ili utauwe tuned always nikiwa online tuned always nikiwa on air tuned always tukiwa live hapa nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya maisha yako umebarikiwa umeinuliwa unaenda viwango vingine Mungu anakupenda We umeokoka Mungu anakupenda ambaye hujaokoka Mungu anakutaka Mungu anatuma mtu wa kutoa uh, utumwani Mungu ametuma mtu wa kukutoa kwenye mashina matatizo na kuanzia leo unaenda kuona mkono wa Mungu ukitenda mema mkono wa Mungu ukikuinua mkono wa Mungu ukiunua hao watoto wako ambao wamekutambisha sana kutokea leo watu wengi watalete shuda zao kwenye uh, Kingdom TV ke hiyo ni YouTube wengine watalete uh, maushuda zao kwenye YouTube yangu uh, Pastor Rubiroth 
wengine wengi watalete eh, na shuda zao kwa dunia yote iweze kujua kwamba Mungu bado anatenda, Mungu bado anaokoa, Mungu anatuma watu wa kukomboa watu wake hadi wa leo huu. Na Mungu anawatazamia na Mungu anawapenda. Tumefanywa kizazi kimoja cha Mungu kupitia Yesu Kristo. Madhayo ametoa Revelation imetuambia nini? Mungu Yesu Kristo anarudi na anakuja mapema. Umejitayarisha kivipi? Mungu Yesu anarudi na anakuja mapema hatujui siku wala saa. Umejitayarisha kivipi? Ambaye anaokoa ulimwengu wote, ambaye anatoa ulimwengu wote kwenye utumwa. Ukijishikamanisha na Yesu Kristo, kwa hakika utotoka kwenye utumwa wote kwenye maisha yako. Utumwa wote wa shida, wa ugonjwa, wa matatizo. Na mtu yote ambaye ananitazama na feel kuna mtu anaweza kuwa anitazama na uko na mashida ya mwili, familia, una mgonjwa kwenye hospitali. Na kutangazia leo kwamba amekombolewa katika damu ya mwana Yesu Kristo na yuko huru atasimama, atatembea, atapona. We unaeni niangalia ukisema na naomba muujiza wa kupona. Muujiza wa kupona upo hapa siku ya leo. Umesikia vile Mungu anafanya miujiza mingi sana. Kwa kweli Mungu atashindwa kufanya miujiza ya kuponya. Mungu atashindwa kufanya miujiza ya kuinua hiyo biashara yako. Mungu atashindwa kufanya miujiza ya mambo kama hayo. Hawezi shindwa. Kwa hivyo mchana wa leo na kuomba ujishikamanishe na Mungu kwa sababu Mungu anakutazamia wewe. Na utakapokuja kwa Mungu, ongea na Mungu kwenye maombi, jiweka sawa sawa tambia matendo na maneno, Mungu anaenda kukuinua na kukusimamisha. Na nashukuru Mungu sana kwa wakati huu tuendelee kuwa pamoja, tuni ni kila wakati, endelea, endelea na Mungu atakubariki in Jesus name. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.